In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at my full workflow of how I process my Astro images. So here's a finished, well, almost finished image. I guess it's a work in progress, but it's pretty close to being finished. Now let's take a look at what the raw file looked like to begin with. Okay, so something like that there. And it's always a bit of a mystery how we get our raw files that look rather flat and lifeless like that, all the way up to look something like that. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're gonna walk right through from the very beginning, the Lightroom processing, through to the early Photoshop processing, and then right through as we really increase the wow factor with a few techniques in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and get started. Moving back to Lightroom, first of all, is where the whole thing starts. And here we are back in Lightroom and you can see I've got several raw files here, varying kind of settings on my camera. So a couple of things about Astro. Number one, you usually want a relatively wide angle lens. Uh, this is a 21 millimeter Zeiss lens that these images are captured on. Um, but there's also a really nice 14 millimeter Samyang that I use for Astro as well, which is considerably wider. But I really wanted to capture Uluru here in a rather large kind of size within the frame and for me this image is more about the Milky Way core here than it is about the vast open wide starry night sky. I mean we kind of get both of those elements here. We get a really intense Milky Way, a nice large Uluru, okay, and we also get that vastness of the sky um, feeling as well, even though we're not shooting it quite as wide as 14 mil. So a 21 mil Zeiss, I have it wide open, so the aperture is wide as it will go. The Zeiss is an f2, so I shoot all the way down at f2, which is usually quite normal for shooting Astro. And then we shoot 30 second exposures, or 20 or 30 second exposures usually, um, depending on whether the, the stars are moving. You can see we get a little bit of star drift here at 30 seconds, but you tend not to notice that too much at 20 millimeters. You could probably come down to around 20 seconds and you wouldn't really notice that drift at all. Okay, so, oh, and of course, lastly, ISO. I tend to take a range of ISO exposures between 3200 and 6400. If we look at these ones here, you can see up in the top right hand corner just near the histogram here, ISO 4000, there's another one at 4000, 5000, 5000, 5000, and 3200 there. So I tend to take a range of exposures. We're going to do a stacking technique in Photoshop called median blending. That's one of those words that I just can't quite say, median, I think that's it, median blending. Okay, so one of those words that I can't quite wrap my tongue around for whatever reason. But anyway, median stacking in Photoshop is what we're going to be doing. Taking five or six images and stacking them in Photoshop to help reduce the noise. Okay, it's an incredible technique. And that's why I've got a series of different exposures here. It seems to work really quite nicely. Um, when you stack a series of different exposures, it can give the stars a little bit more pop than what you would get if you shot everything at 3200, for example. So here's a 3200. And if I click on one of the 5000s, you'll see it's a little bit more exposed and the stars are a little bit kind of sharper, well not sharper, brighter within the frame. Okay, so what we're going to do, clicking back on, doesn't really matter which image we're going to process within Lightroom because we're going to sync them all together anyway. So. I'll click back on the 3200 ISO there. And the first thing I'm going to do is lower the color temperature here. Okay, so bring it into a more of a nighttime feel. Now, I shoot my Milky Way shots or my Astro shots at auto white balance, automatic white balance. So the camera chooses the white balance for me. You will hear people telling you to shoot Astro at a certain color temperature. Um, that is this number here. You can see mine is now 3769. If you've got a favorite color temperature to shoot on, a custom color temperature, shoot on that. But remember, you can always shoot in auto and change the temperature later, which is what I'm doing here. Okay, we'll give it a bit of a 
slight blue tinge like that. Don't worry too much about this golden glow across the middle. We'll fix that up later. Now, one of my favorite things to do with Astro is to use the white slider here to really give the stars a boost. You know, something like that. We can add some contrast. You know, and that's, I mean, that is the key technique, I think, to my Astro processing is just boosting the white point a little like so and adding a little bit of contrast like that. Okay, we can also add a little bit of clarity maybe. Now I generally wouldn't recommend adding clarity this early in my workflow. I would generally come back and add that later. But with Astro, um, we're generally dealing with just stars and they, uh, the clarity doesn't seem to have too many negative effects on an Astro image like it can do on a standard landscape image. I'll leave the saturation and vibrance for the time being. Moving on down, we have sharpening, um, noise reduction down here. So I'm going to just do my normal standard sharpening here, which is radius to the left, detail to the right, and oh, maybe I'll just keep the sharpening down a little bit, maybe at 30. I don't want to sharpen up that noise too much. If I zoom in, you can see how aggressive or how much noise we have there it's pretty outrageous at the moment but when we stack these images you'll see a dramatic change with any luck actually let's stay zoomed in we'll move the luminance up to my standards as well which i like 30 uh, on the luminance slider and the detail at 100 gives us the greatest protection over our details and again color about the same 30 on the slider detail 100 that will reduce a little bit of the noise, but also not affect our detail areas. And then click Enable Profile Corrections, and you can see that just takes the lens distortion and the vignette out of the image. So the vignette is the dark edges of the frame. Okay, there's the before. And you'll see the image shift and the edges lighten up a little bit. In fact, we might even click on Profile here. Take a bit more of that vignette out for the time being. Okay, back to the basic lens corrections. Remove chromatic aberration. That's something I always press. Won't have a great effect on this image, but it might take away a little bit of the... Okay, and that's all we really need to do for the time being. So, what we're going to do is now select five or six of these images. So if I hold shift down and move along to the sixth image here and click on that one, you can see they all highlight. I can move across here, press sync. I get the sync settings panel, check all and synchronize. Um, six images now all sync together pretty much. Okay. So what we're now going to do is send them to Photoshop. So right click on the um, image there. Fringing, color fringing of the edit stars. In and then open as layers in Photoshop. Now you can do this another way around by moving up to the menu here. I think it's photo. Yeah, photo menu, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Now those six selected images will shift straight over to Photoshop ready to be further processed. And while we wait for those to come over, I will say that a couple of these techniques that are coming up are not necessarily for the purists out there. I'm going to do a couple of little bits and pieces that some of the purists might uh, not be overly happy with. Um, that's okay. You can use all my techniques and keep it very, very faithful at the same time. But there will be a couple of elements. Uh, for example, we're going to drop in a slightly better foreground image of the rock to get a little bit more detail into Uluru there rather than using the original Astro images for the um, foreground there. And there we go. We've now got all of those layers stacked one on top of the other. You can see the stars are moving like so. Okay, now, this median stacking, which we're going to do first, 
is probably one of the more complex techniques that I do. I keep my techniques really super simple. But this is a little bit more technical. It is reasonably simple when we break it into the small steps. So I'll try and keep it relatively slow and not jump ahead because if we miss one step, it'll mess the process up. Okay, so I'll try and keep it relatively um, slow so I don't race in front. So we need to now select the sky. So click on the top image here, the image at the top of the stack there. Click the quick selection tool, which is the fourth tool down. One, two, three, four. Okay, and it looks like the icon is a brush with a plus symbol in the middle. If you don't have the plus symbol up the top in the tool menu here, you can see the icon here, the brush with the plus. That's the default, that's the one we want. And we just want to select the sky like so. Now initially it's probably going to want to select everything. There you go, like that. Now what we do is hold down Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC and you'll see the plus changes to a minus. And then we just want to push back against the foreground. Now the key with quick selection is not to run along the edge, but to push up a little bit away from the edge, if you know what I mean. Let me just give you an example of that. Command Z. So here we are here, change to a minus. Don't run along here, along the edge. Come in from a distance like this. Stay away from the edge and let the quick selection tool do all the hard work. Okay, now we're not going to refine the edge of the mask. It's not that critical with this technique to have a perfect mask. The rough one will be fine. So what we need to do is add a new layer mask. So down the bottom of our layer panel, the little layer mask icon, rectangle with a circle in the center. Click on that and you'll now see that that mask has transferred over, or that selection, I should say, has transferred over to that new mask there. If I hold down Option or Alt and click on that mask, you can see there it is there. Okay, now a little mini shortcut. We need to transfer that same mask to all of the layers below. The way we do that is to hold down Option or Alt and then click and drag the mask to each layer below. Okay, we should end up with something like that. Okay, so just hold down Option or Alt and click and drag that mask down to each other layer. We then need to select all layers. And the way we do that is by clicking and highlighting the top layer and then holding down Shift and clicking and highlighting the bottom layer. You'll notice that highlights all of those layers. Now let's move up. We need to auto align to align these stars to allow us to stack and reduce noise. Okay, let's now move up to the edit menu and down to auto align. Make sure the auto button is selected and then press OK. Got a lot of big raw files here, so it's taking a little bit of time, obviously. You need to have some patience and obviously a decent processor on your computer to handle this kind of work. But there we go there. If I now turn off each layer, you can see that the stars don't shift like they were before. Remember they were kind of twisting before? Now they're all perfectly aligned, which is excellent. Okay, with all of our layers still highlighted in gray, we move up to the layer menu, down to Smart Objects and over to Convert to Smart Object and click on that, Convert to Smart Object. Again, this will take some time. Okay, you can now see that those six images there have been converted into one Smart Object. So they're all still essentially in there. Um, they're just under the under the heading of a smart object now. Back up to the layer menu, we're going to do the median stacking technique to reduce noise. So let's zoom right in and see if we can see this happening in action, in live action at 100%. Let's see if we can see the difference here. I sure hope you can. Um, okay, 
So back up to the layer menu, back down to smart objects once again, down to stack mode, and then over and down to medium. Let's see what happens. This will be interesting. Drum roll, please. Okay, a huge difference. Let's just press Command or Control Z to go back. There is the unstacked or the raw file, if you like. You can see we have, you know, little hot spots on the sensor in purple, red, yellow, green, all over the place, plus a truckload of noise. And as we press Command Z to go back to the median stacking, there we go. There, it's a super clean. Just incredibly clean file. You know, you could print this at 100%, no problem at all. You know, it's a super clean file now. There's hardly any noise in there at all. Unbelievable. Um, all those hotspots are gone. Um, all we're left with is stars and sky, essentially. There's a tiny little bit of noise, but it's really smooth and, and quite pleasing. So that would print up absolutely beautifully. Zooming back out. So that's a huge technique if you're an astro, um, if you're a fan of astrophotography. Okay, now we have the stars, all right? Now what we need to do is add the foreground back in because although you can see it in black there, it's not really there. We actually cut the foreground away, so we don't have a foreground at all at the moment. So what we can do, we can either bring back in one of the original file foregrounds, and you could even stack a whole bunch of foregrounds together using that same technique, but align using the foreground, not the sky, if you know what I mean. Like select the foreground and stack that. Um, we could definitely do that if you wanted to keep it as faithful to the scene as possible. But I'm going to try and remain relatively faithful as well. But I'm going to use a new foreground, um, something taken just before the sun went down and add that in to give us a little bit more detail. Now before I do that, I just want to straighten the horizon. So click the crop tool there, click the straighten icon, drag from one side to the other. Okay, that's perfect. Click OK. Now I'm going to head back to Lightroom and if I scroll back, you can see there's all my astro shots skimming along the bottom there. And as I get back here, you can see I have some twilight type images. Now I could even use one of these. I could definitely use one of those, but it's still at ISO 3200, so the quality of the shot's not going to be great. So rather than that, how about I use this one right on the edge uh, in the last line, as the sun's gone down, ISO 100, we have a beautifully clean file here that will match our beautifully new stacked clean sky. Let's send that one over. I'm not going to do too much processing. I have some defaults here which I set my um, Lightroom processing up for. You can also find all of those over at easywayphotography.com.au. So I can pretty much leave that at defaults and send that over. So we need to press Command or Control A, depending on which machine you're on, which will select all. Command or Control C for copy. And there is our gorgeous sky. Command or Control V will paste. I'm then going to lower the opacity of the new layer there. And grab the Move tool. And I can use my arrow keys. To get that as good as possible. Now it looks like, in fact, that my new image is, the horizon is slightly out. Let me drag in. Yeah, okay. It is slightly there. So what I'll do, Command T for free transform. And I'll just straighten that horizon up on the uh, top layer here. Okay, so I've just moved outside the free transform area. So that was Command or Control T will give you free transform. And if we move outside, we get the little rotation icon. 
because if I use the standard straighten tool, it will straighten both wires, not one. That looks great. Click on the thank you very much at the top. And again, with that move tool, just get that right. Now you can see my new Uluru here is just slightly sitting above the old one, which is exactly what I want. Let's move that ruler, clear guides, opacity back to 100%, back over and grab our quick selection tool. Once again, there's an excellent quick selection tutorial over at Easy Wave Photography. And again, we just need to select the sky like that. This time we are going to refine. So click on select and mask. And using the refine edge brush here, we just need to run along the edge like so. And that will just tidy up that selection absolutely perfectly. Click OK. And again, add a layer mask to that layer one, our new foreground layer. Okay, and you can actually see that the mask is back the front. We've got black in the foreground and white in the sky. That's okay. I find it easier to use the quick selection to select the sky and then invert the mask to reveal the foreground. So all we now need to do is press Command or Control I and invert that mask. Okay, something like that. Now that looks pretty wild, as is. Okay, so now we need to do a couple of things. First of all, I'm not a huge fan. Now this, as I said, is not possibly for the purists. There'll be a few people that won't agree with this next step, but I don't really like this atmospheric and low cloud on the horizon here. Okay, not a huge fan of that. So what I'm going to do is just shift the sky down a little bit. So click on the sky, click on the move tool, Okay, something like that. That looks fine. Happy with that. Okay, now we also need to make our foreground look a little bit more realistic, like nighttime. So let's click back on our foreground there and we can add a solid color layer. This is a great technique for making day look like night. We want solid color black, so click, it doesn't matter what color you have on the vertical hue bar. If your solid color layer looks a little different to this, just click on the little H icon here. You can see there's several variations here. Click on the H for hue, and it doesn't matter what color is there, just click in the middle somewhere and drag through the bottom left corner. And you'll see all the zeros down in the, hash, in the color hashtag here. Click OK. We're now going to attach that solid black layer directly to the foreground. The way we do that, on a Mac, we hold down Option on a PC, hold down Alt, and hover between the two layers. And you'll see a little icon pop up, a little square with an arrow. When you see that icon, just click once. Okay, and that attaches that black straight to the foreground. Okay, and then it's just a case of lowering the opacity till we like the look. Now it's night time, it's going to look something like that, isn't it? Okay, I quite like that. 50 or 60% there. Looks quite nice. Okay, let's just tidy up the crop a little bit. We might just come inside that big tree there. Milky Way off the left corner there. And I also want to have Uluru relatively central, something like that. Click OK. Looking good. OK, so that, that's the hard work done. Now it's just the straight up processing. OK, so what I'm going to do, and there's a little trick here as well. If I click on the bottom layer here, I can add a layer, let's say a curves for darkening, 
and because it's below the foreground layer in the layer stack, it will only affect the sky. Okay, see that? Just affecting the sky. Okay, so maybe we'll darken down a little bit like so. Maybe we'll add some contrast, a little bit like so. There we go. Looking good to our sky. Okay, so the next thing is we have this weird orange glow on the horizon, which I'm not a huge fan of. I mean, you can leave that, it's pretty wild. But I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And probably the best way is to use a hue saturation layer. Again, making sure it's above the sky, but below the foreground. And look, I think I'm just going to desaturate almost everything like this. That's looking pretty cool. And then with a black brush, so B for brush, change to black. Yeah, 20% looks about right. We can kind of bring back some of that color. That was in the Milky Way there. Oh, be careful not to bring that orange glow back into the sky there. Something like that. And then night skies are usually blue. You've heard this sort of saying midnight blue in reference to a starry sky, I guess. Let's go and add a color filter or photo filter in a cool. One of the cooling filters here. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Just check here, that's nice too. I quite like all of those. Very natural. Yeah, that one. That one's maybe a little too blue. Might go with that one. Let's try and add another photo filter. And this time I had the second cooling filter. Okay, that's probably a bit much, but let's go and just reduce the opacity there. Okay, so we're starting to get a bit of a feeling going here. Now the foreground itself, the rock Uluru and the foreground should be a little bit blue. Uh, I'll have a blue tinge. So if we move up and click on Uluru, and add another layer. If we add it underneath the original clipped layer, the solid color black, they will continue to clip in the same fashion. They'll automatically attach. So let's go and see what a cooling filter looks like on the foreground. Oh, yeah, that's nice. I don't see a lot of difference this time. If we turn that on and off, you'll see, see that subtle change from those warm reds. To those cool night blues there. Excellent. Okay, we've still got a little tidying up to do in the sky, and I still want to pop these stars up a little bit further. So, what I want to do, see this kind of dark edge down near the horizon? I just want to tidy that up a little bit. So, I need to be down above the sky but below the foreground layer. I know it's a little kind of confusing, but layers work downward, so it can't affect anything above. So it won't affect the foreground, which is great. So curves. And what I'm going to do is just lift up the black point here. See how that's kind of removing that horizon kind of messy section there. See how it's dark and messy. That's perfect. Invert that layer, Command or Control, Invert, or I for Invert, sorry. B for Brush, and with a white brush, you can just kind of try and even up. You can see there's kind of some darkish patches. I like my sky to be relatively even in its transitions, so I'll spend, you know, 15, 20 minutes just evening up some of these graduations. There's a big dark patch up here. I'm just going to use this same layer to take a little bit of those dark patches out. Okay, that's looking rather nice. Now we might do similar to the foreground. So clicking back on the foreground and adding another layer there, curves. We might just raise the black point a touch and that'll give it a nice kind of soft low contrast feel 
for the foreground. Again, invert, Command or Control I, and with our soft brush in white, we can just wash over that foreground and you'll see just a slight soft, almost velvet feel to the foreground there. Maybe, again, working on the sky again, I'm bouncing around a bit because I'm just working on what I see next. So the sky next, so again, below the foreground, above the sky, curves, and I, and I want to darken down the sky in general. Night sky should be fairly dark. And once again, Command or Control I to invert a big brush. And we'll just paint from the top, long strokes like this. Again, if we notice, I'm not sure if you guys can see at home, but there's a slight dark band in this area. I'm just try and even that up with this layer here by painting a bit of dark above. Coming down like so. Okay, pretty simple, straightforward techniques there. Pretty happy with where we are. Let's do a few more, more global overall effects here now. So what I'm going to do, I've moved to the top of my layer stack and clicked on the very top layer there. I then on a Mac press Command, Option, Shift and E for everything. This will merge the layers up. On a PC, um, that shortcut is Control, Alt, Shift and E for everything. That gives us one layer with a combination of all the layers below. And what I like to now do is grab the burn tool, which is, it's a lot down. How many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, the 14th tool down. If we click and hold on that, we want to move across and select the burn tool here. We're then going to select shadows and a really low exposure level, which is kind of like the opacity level of, yeah, 5% might do. And all this will do is darken up the dark area. So it's going to give the details or the shadow regions of the Milky Way a little bit more detail, as you can see there. Those kind of cool details within the Milky Way get a little bit more detail. You can even darken off the top of the sky a little. We can then, again using the same tool or the same region, click and hold on that tool and select the Dodge tool. And you can muck around with the highlights or the mid-tones, again on a low exposure, 15%. This will give your stars even a little bit more pop. I'm just on mid-tones here, 15%. That looks great. Okay, before, after, before, after. A little bit more definition into that Milky Way there. Okay, now we might duplicate Command or Control J, that dodge and burn layer, and we can move up to the filter menu and choose Camera Raw Filter. And this is basically sending us back to Camera Raw, which is exactly the same tools as Lightroom, where we can add a little bit more clarity, like so. We can maybe also just increase the exposure a tiny bit, like so. That looks great. Click OK. Before, after, a little bit more clarity, a little bit more exposure. Looking perfect. I think I just want to give the whole image a slight kind of bluish, purplish wash. Um, so let's use a solid color layer. And look, for the time being, we'll choose a bluish, purplish color. Anywhere will do. Click OK. Change that to soft light. And then we double click back in on the colored icon there. And we can just bounce around, letting go of the mouse, until we find something we like. Now we can change the color as well, slightly more blue, slightly more purple, a little bit more light, something like that. 
Okay, and you know what? I think I'm pretty much done. Maybe just to tidy up the image, I might just block out or darken down the foreground, the grasses a little bit more. So we could use solid color black again or a curves layer. Let's just use a curves. Drag that down. Command or Control I for invert. Grab our brush. Actually, that's not our brush. B for brush. And we'll just bump the flow and opacity up a little there. Nice small brush, and we can that'll just help take that little distraction away a little bit. Well, it's not really a distraction, but you can see what I mean. Like it was quite bright and kind of drawing my eye down there for no good reason, really. And by darkening that off, it now allows me to see the really important elements of this particular image. So that's really all there is to it. We did the Lightroom stuff and the importance of kind of changing that white point was pretty important to Astro. We then used median stacking, which I can't say very well, but um, an excellent technique. And then I've ran you through a very, I hope you found it reasonably basic because it is a very advanced workflow, the fact that we're working in between two layers. So we're individually working on the sky by placing those adjustments between the sky and the foreground layer. Okay, so they didn't affect the foreground. And then we were individually working on the foreground layer by using those clipping masks. Okay, so to create a new clipping mask, we can add a layer and then press Option or Alt and hover between the two layers, for example. We then merged up and applied some global adjustments there. Um, finished off by giving it a slight purple wash, which I, you know, I kind of like. I think it looks cool. And uh, darkening off some of those distractions there. And there you go. It's now a case of converting this into a JPEG and posting it on the web, or we could um, flatten it and send it off to the printer and get that printed. Now you would also probably just do a little bit of noise reduction, maybe a little bit of sharpening um, before you sent that off to a printer. I hope you really found that useful and interesting, and I look forward to seeing some incredible Astro images. Thanks for watching along, and I look forward to seeing you at the next tutorial. And once again, if you're looking for a full workflow for landscape photography, jump over and check out www.easywayphotography.com.au. Thanks again, and bye for now.